guys. I've had lunch. <laughs> um, thank you for waiting. Welcome to my sacred space. My name is Laura Victoria. I'm a mental health therapist and spiritual mentor. And I specialize in the intersection of healing and wellness through spirituality and mental health. So I want to talk about in this video, Megan Thee Stallion, like her case really has me very bothered. I think it's very ghetto. And it has a lot of people showing their true colors. <laughs> and as we all can see, um, it's even though Tory Lanez is the one on trial, Megan is very much on trial in the court of public opinion. And I feel like it's very much giving Monique <laughs> when the clownery comes back to bite. Yeah. Um, I, you know, I want to make something clear though. I want to give a disclaimer. This video and nothing that I'm talking about, none of it is in an effort or attempt. None of it is an effort or attempt to police other women's sexuality or vaginas. I don't care about body counts. I believe that all people should be able to do what they want. I don't believe in slut shaming, any of that. So no, I am not trying to tell you to be abstinent or to hold your virginity until marriage. Not, not my vibe, right? But I do want to talk about the reality, right, of the world that we live in, which is a patriarchal world, which does judge women um, unfairly right? The systems that we're in are oppressive to the freedom of choice that we make. And just like you can decide that you're going to rob a bank because you feel like you have the freedom and you're owed the equal right to money in this world because slavery shouldn't have existed, the police also have the right to arrest you because that's the way, that's the system that we live in. Unfortunately, in this system as well, in a patriarchal system with hella misogyny, specifically misogyny noir, our actions that we take as far as who we align ourselves with intimately, especially, our actions have consequences. And it's really fun being a hot girl and cheering the hot seats. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So I want to talk about that. And before I do that, as we all know, um, Let's catch up on what's actually going on in the court. Oh, I can't lie. I didn't expect to care enough to be on top of this case, but I'm, I'm right on top of it, y'all. <laughs> I'm right on top of it. I'm, I'm trying to stay on top of all the details. So let's see. I am not on trial. Megan Thee Stallion testifies that Tory Lane's shooting defense led her to sexual shaming by Hip Hop's Big Boys Club. Oh, boy. Do we have a lot to talk about? Um, so Megan Thee Stallion testified Tuesday that Tory Lanez and his supporters are trying to turn him, shooting her into a sex scandal that victimizes him, lamenting the tabloid style coverage of Lanez's criminal assault case that shames her for being a grown woman having sex and speculates about her sex partners. Again, this is where I come in and I remind you guys, it should be 100% Megan's business who she's having sex with. Should society be so amazed? and distracted by this, her sexual escapades as a grown autonomous woman, no. But are we, <laughs> as a society, obsessed with that information? Absolutely. And is it making a spectacle out of the crime where she is a victim? Absolutely, right? So this is where I talk about accountability. Um, <clears throat> I don't understand why that matters. Y'all got hella ads on here, sorry. I don't understand why that matters. I've been turned into some kind of villain, villain, and he a victim. Megan said, as Lanes looked on from the defense in a downtown Los Angeles courtroom. This has messed up my whole life, she said. People call Lane's trial the Megan Thee Stallion trial, but she's not on trial. Asked how the shooting has affected her physically, Megan said she underwent physical therapy, but to this day, she can't really feel the left side of her foot because of damaged nerves. The back of my feet are always sore, but I still push through that. The two-time Grammy winner, winner also shared her shame over having to publicly admit that she had sex with Lanes because it's disgusting. <clears throat> Y'all, I have so many thoughts. I'm trying to stay, I'm trying to stay focused, but you know, what's really interesting to me is um, how clear hindsight in hindsight after the case I don't want to feel like a know-it-all and I don't want to, 
I'm, again, I'm not here to shame Megan for her decisions, but I can tell you that having, I can tell you in my perspective that having sex with Tory Lanez is disgusting before he shot you. <laughs> Choosing Tory Lanez, disgusting. And you know, and you know why? It's not because he's a rapper. It's not, it's not because, you know, of, of his height, which, you know, to each his own. Um, it's about character. It's about character. I want y'all to watch. There's a, a YouTuber by the name of Wild Heart Waves. She made a really good video talking about how um, allegedly if Megan was really with the amount of people, the amount of people, the names that they're throwing uh, into the tabloids, if she was with them intimately, Megan really did not have a lot of time to vet the characters of these men. And what happens when you when you decide to lay down, when you decide to sleep with somebody and connect intimately, because it's not always just physical. Sometimes we make somebody a best friend. Sometimes we have core emotional boundaries. Oh, I keep forgetting my camera's up here, y'all. <laughs> but sometimes we have core emotional boundaries and we enmesh in that way, right? But either way, when you're when you are committing and investing your intimate energy into somebody, um, you need time to make sure that that is a safe space. And when you and your body, specifically as a woman, move, in, then your intuition and then your judgment can um, it places you in really vulnerable and dangerous positions, like we see with Megan now. So let me keep reading. Where do we leave off? <laughs> At this point, how could I share my body with somebody who would shoot me? Mm. Megan said that the pushback, Megan said that the pushback from within the industry and I feel disgusting, I feel dirty, I feel like I don't matter. Honestly, I feel so bad for her. She said she feels like she can't even hold a conversation for an extended period of time. Uh, and reference the vitriol she constantly endures from people who support Tory Lanez. I wish he would have just shot and killed me if I knew I was going to have to go through with this torture, Megan said. She also testified that her relationship with her partner has suffered because of the vitriolic drama she faces. Tory has come out and, tell, and tells so many lies about me, Megan said, adding that he and his supporters are making this all about a sex scandal while nobody defends her. I feel like a bit sick bird, she testifies. Okay. So, you know, it's really hard. I find it very hard to have these conversations. We got some positive responses, but a lot of times we as women, and I've been there too. This is why I'm talking about it. Cause I've been on the opposite side too, where I've, I, became indignant and defensive about anybody telling me what to do with my body. And that's why I wanted to make the disclaimer. This is this video is not about me telling you don't have sex with the people you choose to have sex with. It's not about me telling you um, that wait 90 days and then you know. It's not about that, but it is about recognizing and taking full accountability. Ooh, y'all are doing construction. <laughs> Concession next door. It is about recognizing and taking full responsibility for the good and the bad that comes with that. And you know, it's very easy when you're having your hot girl summer. It's very easy to do what you want, to feel the validation, to get your urges and your bodily needs met without fear of consequence or judgment, without shame. That is liberating. I get it. But the way that they push it on us now. It's not liberating because it's not a full 360 perspective of what happens. It's very one-sided, right? It's very, I get on Instagram and I shake my ass and then all the girls tell me I'm cute and boys fly me out. Like it's very one-sided looking at the benefits. What we're seeing with Tori and the, what we're seeing with, <laughs> sorry y'all. Okay, so what we're, I'm just gonna talk over it. Sorry, I'll just yell. <laughs> I will just yell. But what we're seeing at the point of this, right? 
it's one thing to have your hot girl summer and to just be having fun because you're doing what you really want. It's another thing to look back, to look back at your decisions and recognize that you gave your body, you gave your time, you gave your emotion, energy, and invested that into somebody who doesn't respect you. Ouch. Ooh. Y'all. And this, these are the sides of the conversations nobody wants to talk about. I'm a therapist and I don't say that to say I know more than y'all like I can't like I'm above making mistakes but I said that to say I talk to women every day who have had that phase in their life or even if it wasn't a hot girl phase they made decisions about who they give their time and energy to and then they regret it oh my god <laughs> they give they make decisions about who they give their time <laughs> can y'all hear this construction please let me know okay y'all hit tell me in the comments if y'all can hear the construction because if y'all can hear it i'm sorry but if y'all can't i'll just keep on talking through it can y'all hear me above it at least Jesus Christ. Okay. It's not for now. So let me try to get my words, words in. It is one thing um, for you to be having your hot girl summer and having the fun. Okay. You hear me? Amazing. Thank you. Thank you so much. Um, so it's one thing to recognize that you're having a good time and that you feel free in the moment because you decided you you made the decision regardless probably over other people's feelings and beliefs over your own fear of judgment which which is liberating that part is liberating right the shamelessness of that is liberating but what happens afterwards many times the aftermath is you are sitting back wondering why did you give this person your time right because because you weren't able to find the time you weren't able to vet you weren't able to give the person time to show their true colors or and i think this is a bit of what happened with megan um you feel like you're exempt Ooh. people show us their characters all the time especially men it's very tricky as black women because our our culture specifically is very heavily rooted, hip hop culture is very heavily rooted in misogyny and the putting down the, degrada the degradation, degradation of black women. So many times we hear men who, who future is their, their idol and they have all of this rhetoric. Their favorite songs are misogynistic. The way that they talk about women, women are bitches and hoes, every other word. But you're with them because it's just it's just it's just music, right? It's just oh, it's just a saying. Bitches is just a general term. No, <laughs> no. Until you see that you fall into that category, right? Until you see oh, he doesn't care about me either. It doesn't matter if you're the stallion. It doesn't matter if you're prettier than the other girls he messed with. It doesn't matter if you have more money. Many of us get um, placed into that same box of being disrespected, dismissed and feeling violated afterwards. And now what we have to do is hold the weight of, oh my God, I gave my body to this person. Yeah. Oh my God, I gave my time to this person. Oh, I can't believe it. I feel so stupid. And th th this is what I hear my clients, right? What I hear from my clients. I, I just can't believe I allowed that. I had no boundaries. I've been degraded. Um, he doesn't respect me. People still in relationships dealing with these problems. And I, again, I don't say it out of judgment, but I say it because not enough people talk about this side of it. Megan says she wished she would have died. <laughs> That's, is that not scary to y'all? She wished she, she would have rather died than be held in the court of public opinion for the decisions that she made as a free grown woman, right? So I'm gonna keep lacing this disclaimer in here because I just can already anticipate the arguing. But I'm not saying that she does not have the right to make that choice. But because you live in a patriarchy, 
because you live in the United States of America, where our value is as women, our value is in the way that we're treated, um, it's political, right? Like the who we lay with is not just energetically and spiritually important and vulnerable, but politically it determines how we are protected, who deems us as worthy of protection. There are grown men grown man y'all saw y'all saw her walk into the court um she pulled up and what this grown man say megan why you lying that boy <laughs> megan has bullets in her feet megan got shot but we are so distracted by who she slept with because in the society that will always be weaponized against women we it will i'm so i'm so sorry and you can choose to be the social justice warrior about it and lay your body on the line to prove a point. But this is the this is the consequence, right? These are the consequences of that. The public shaming, the judgment. It's not fair. No, but it's the society that we live in a lot. Of, <laughs> and they just go off of emotions. A lot of people are are subconsciously motivated. They hear one person say she a hoe and now she, She's not worth protecting. They hear one distraction about, oh, well, she slept with her best friend's man. And if that's the case, that's that's messed up. Yeah, there's accountability for Megan to take care. I mean, but I feel like that's what this whole video is about. Choosing, choosing who you're with wisely. I'm sorry, y'all, I've preached enough. Let me get back to this article. Um. So basically, she said that um, it's messed up her career as well, and that she believes that her career was bigger than Tori. Now, what's interesting, I, honestly, I feel like none of us will ever know the full-blown truth. It's very much given like Beyonce, Jay-Z, and Solange in the elevator, especially with Kelsey's testi testifying. That was a whole mess. <laughs> Honestly, it's, it's giving mistrial, um, which is, I think, at this point, the best we can hope for, unless there's more evidence. I mean, but again, that's my point, right? We have been so distracted. Hold on, how do I stop, stop presenting? We've been so successfully distracted by Megan's sexual escapades that the facts, the simple hard facts that there were three people in a car, one person got shot. So it, it has to be one of the other two. Y'all are letting people, I don't know if y'all listening to this, but people are letting Megan's sexual history um, defy the fact, the hard blown facts that she has bullet, had bullets in her feet. Because we hate as, as a society, right? That the morals and the ethics of America, of media are so ass backwards that they, Megan, I don't wanna say she's famous because of that, but it's a big part of her stick. It's a big part of the draw, right? Again, everybody loves a hot girl summer. Everybody loves a hot girl. She's doing what she's doing. And it's like, girl, get yours, do that, right? Until it's time for judgment, until it's time for judgment from the people who don't support you. It's very easy, it's the emperor wearing no clothes. It's very easy to feel like you're safe and you're supported when it's just your fans around. But when other people come around and they hold you accountable for your actions with a different perspective, it's very easy to change your mind. Very easy. Now tell me, I don't, y'all Y'all have to put your business out if y'all don't want to, but. Has any of you, have any of you, especially if there are women in here, have any of you ever been lied on sexually about your sexual activities? I have. Put your hand up. I have. Fine. Well, I've been lied on. And you know what's so frustrating? And I, I'm not saying that Megan was lied on. I don't know. Again, I feel like we'll never know. But what I can tell you is, even if it's not the truth, um, you you have to deal with those consequences. And that was, this was my experience in college. Actually, that happened to me. It, because back to the point of the culture, a lot of 
as children, even, unfortunately, um, a lot of Black media, especially hip hop culture, pushes hypersexualization, pushes this agenda on us so that we feel liberation in doing it, we feel grown in doing it, not even recognizing that we're putting our bodies out to slaughter. Yeah, so even if you've been, even if it's not true, the vitriol that can come towards you, the judgment, right? The court of public opinion of the people who aren't on your side can wear down on your feelings. That that shame can eat you up. And I think that shame is, is eating Megan up right now. Old male, hold on, I don't know how to share this, y'all. Um, I gotta show y'all a grown adult male talking about, <laughs> talking about Megan. Because a lot of people, um, I think that a lot of people who follow me and who I follow, a lot of us are understanding and like a lot of us are on Megan's side. But I want to, I want y'all to see how convinced many people are, um, in her demonization. Hold on, y'all. It's taking forever to play. I don't know who y'all are who are here, but that's crazy that none of y'all have ever been lied on sexually. It's just me. <laughs> it's just me. Well, let me give y'all a little story time while we wait for this to open. <clears throat> um, I was a virgin in college, actually. The patriarchy's power to dismiss you. Oh my God, hello. My love is here. Enjoying this conscious conversation. Ooh, definitely been lied on, especially with people who wish they would have had a chance with me. That's the craziest part. That's the craziest part. It's like you could never, <laughs> in, real, in real life, you could never. Um, but unfortunately, somebody puts that battery in their back. Somebody puts that battery in their back and they just feel really, really audacious and bold. Um, and to that point, I'm sure that, or I'm not sure, but I imagine that in your experience too, you dealt with the consequences. You, those consequences are real. And I remember the shame that I felt let me tell you another quick story time. <laughs> Speaking of making out, I didn't even make out with this guy, actually. Um, me and my friend, was it me and my friend? I went to this guy's dorm once. This is a, a, a Morehouse man. Y'all, I went to Clark Atlanta University. <laughs> this is so, look at me just talking. I went to Clark Atlanta University and um, me and my friend met these football players once. And we were just like, okay, let's hang out. He invited me over once. Um, so I went to his dorm and it was like a, a group dorm. It wasn't just him. It was one of those apartments where it's like three rooms on this side, three rooms on that side. I went over, we watched the movie. We fell asleep. I swear to God, that's all that's, that's all that happened. Um, I woke up though in the middle of the night, very uncomfortable. I had to use the bathroom. So, uh, because we fell asleep on the little bitty twin bed, he was a football player. So he was built like, <laughs> built like a rock. That's why I don't like him so now, child. I need some cushions. <laughs> um, but I had to go to the bathroom. So I went to the bathroom and in true men's fashion, there was no tissue. So I left, mind you, I'm wearing, I had, I think I had on a hoodie, um, one of his hoodies. I don't remember, but, uh, when I went to the bathroom, I just had on leggings and a camisole because that's how we dressed back in the day and like a hoodie, but maybe I took the hoodie off. I don't know. Um, the bathroom though, didn't have tissue. So I had to leave and I tried to knock on his door, but he was, I swear to God, a stone cold out. And like, again, it's, he has five other roommates. So I'm trying not to embarrass myself and knock obnoxiously, but essentially I'm locked out of his door. So I'm like, okay, I have to pee. There's no tissue. I can't get in his room, but I also don't want to pee on myself. I leave the actual room. And I find a bathroom in like, you know, one of the common bathrooms in the dorm. And I remember walking through the hallway and there was a guy walking past me. 
there was a guy walking past me and he looked at me and he shook his head and I had never felt smaller in my life. <laughs> I had never felt smaller in my life. I was just like, no, it's not what it looks like, but it didn't matter. It didn't matter. The judgment, the shame that comes from the perspective was, was his truth, his narrative. Now, to that point, again, I'm not saying that we should dance around and try to please others and care about other people's narrative because as I've said plenty of times, I believe we should all be able to make the decisions we can with our body. But it is a very possible consequence that um, shame and frustration and fear, regret, yeah, um, feeling degraded, those are all very real consequences. And Megan is dealing with that on such a large scale. I feel so bad for her. She says she feels dirty. She feels like a sick bird. She would have rather died. Like, come on. It was enough for me to feel this little bitty from that one boy who saw me in the hallway. Megan has millions of followers. She is a superstar. And now her actions are being placed in front of people who aren't in support of her. That hurts. That hurts. Girl, I swear to God, it was so embarrassing. <laughs> I wore cheap weave back then too, y'all, so my hair was like. <laughs> Woo, God bless. God bless the mess. Thank God for growth. <laughs> oh my God, it was such an embarrassing day. Also, shout out to my friends. <clears throat> I hit up one of my friends, um, Heather, at the time. She walked over to the dorm for me. She bought me a hoodie and then walked me back to the room. I was so, after, it's so funny because after seeing him, um, I just stood in the corridor. I refused to walk through the rest of the hallways. I was so scared <laughs> of being seen. So I just hid and I was like, please girl, come meet me at whatever dorm and bring a hoodie because I smell so naked. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, unfortunately, and that's my point. Like, it doesn't make sense. It's not fair, no, but it's the system we live in. And so so often I feel like we're fighting, like we're, we're, we're trying to prove a point. And that places you, it's literally laying your body on the line. You're going to war. You're going to mental, spiritual, physical, emotional war with society, with the system when you really could just take more time or at least vet, right? Vet people better, keep it quiet maybe. Like real G's move in silence, like lasagna. <laughs> that, the, the silence and like, what's that word? Not, there's just, there's a value to being incons inconspicuous. Yeah, but it's basically TikToks y'all, awesome. Discretion. Thank you, Michelle. Thank you, Michelle. We want to move with discretion. And you know, I don't. I don't want. Actually, I'm. I'm tired of telling y'all that I'm not trying to shame y'all. So, um, y'all, y'all know my. Y'all know how I'm moving. Like y'all know the place that I'm moving from. Not one of judgment, but one of trying to see better for y'all and trying to spare us as women this pain. Um, because we don't we don't deserve to go through that. But because we don't deserve to go through that, we have to play with the game, right? And this is where honestly for me, like my feminine healing has been so important to me. Because you know I've even feminism, honestly, even feminism tricked me. Like I was so, no, I'm going to pay for dinner because I didn't want to be, I didn't want people to be able to say, um, you're less of a woman because I have to spend. Not understanding, not understanding that the type of man who believes that it just isn't worth my time. Not understanding that the type of man who believes that is more than likely just unable to provide in the way that somebody would expect him to. So then he shames somebody else, right? He shames the woman who wants more of him. 
it's very easy to fall into that trap, the trap of uh, what the patriarchy tells us. It's like, just do, just do this, just be this way, right? Without recognizing, um, fighting against that, without recognizing that, yes, the patriarchy many times um, has oppressive and extremist views on it, but there is truth in some of it. And, you know, I don't want to get too esoteric, right? But when we think about masculine energy, I'm not talking about gender. I'm not talking about a phallus. I'm talking about the energy of the masculine, which mirrors the patriarchy. Unfortunately, the patriarchy is to an extreme. But masculine energy is very, it provides structure. It offers logic. It says, this is what this is. This is what that is, right? It's very black and white. Feminine energy is able to flow in between, right? So think of the oceans. The oceans are most of the of this planet, but there is earth. There are structured continents and there are cities and there are countries and there are established states, right? And water comes, crashes around, but generally knows its boundaries. When it comes to sex, when it comes to how we as women present, um, yes, many times we don't, we don't want to be in a box that patriarchy sets for us. But if we can look past just trying to act out like a rebellious teenager, we can recognize some of it is to our benefit. Yeah, it is to your benefit to move with, as Michelle says, it is of our benefit to move with discretion with whom we invest our time and energy with. It's also important for us to move with um, intuition, right? It's very important for us to be patient and to show, let people show us our characters, um, show us their characters before we pour into them. And this was one of the videos I wanted to share, but technical difficulties, oh well. Um, I made a TikTok about this the other day. Actually, I wonder if I can pull it up just by going to TikTok.com. <laughs> let me of the consequences. Let I'm gonna let that one more time. be a reminder to us all that when you intimately connect with somebody, be it physically, emotionally, spiritually, whatever, I'm not judging. Okay. When you connect with somebody, you place yourself in the firing range of their karma. Mm -hmm. Good and bad, sis. Yeah, yeah. So you're wondering why you have all these new problems? You never dealt with that before. You never had these types of issues. It's not yours. Yeah, you're just a shock absorber of the consequences of somebody else's actions. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, yeah, I really wanted to bring that up because, and now I'll, I'll just use this to wrap, to wrap this up. Um, since the rest of my videos aren't planned. Thank y'all so much for being here, by the way. Thank you guys. Um, but when we connect, right, as, as women, I think that a really big part of our healing journey and like the collective, the collective evolving of women in general is really tapping back into our divine power. Because many of us have just accepted that having a woman, like being a woman means XX chromosome. When we are actually, we are literal portals to this universe we have divine power y'all gotta read the books the patriarchy really has us fooled because before we had systems of government ruled by men the the priestesses right it, it was priestesses it was witches it was the women who were in places of leadership the women were worshipped the women were revered we are the gatekeepers to this entire universe we are we are the portals that all life comes through and it's very it's very impulsively and like short term satisfying um to make decisions based on however you feel and whatever you want to do at any given time um, but many times that negates understanding of the, the, the power, right? It negates the power that we have, the power that we give away by simply attaching to somebody, by simply 
touching or being around another person, um, let alone giving our bodies to them, let alone connecting intimately and trauma bonding and holding somebody else's secrets and protecting. When you offer that type of, when you offer your power to somebody else like that, they can really benefit from it. And meanwhile, while, while you are aligned with them, your body, your spirit, your energy comes into the firing line of their karma, of the decisions because of the character that they have, which is why it's important for us to take time and vet the people. And this isn't just sexual. Ooh, spam. I'm famous, y'all. <laughs> hey, spam. Welcome. <laughs> um, yeah, point being though, um, when you take the time, when you're patient and you vet the people, whether they're coming as friends, whether they come in as family, because I talked about this, the last conscious conversation video I made was about letting friends. We saw with Shanquella, rest in peace, we saw with Shanquella that she unfortunately perhaps did not give enough time to vet who was really there for her, right? Who was really um, supportive for her? The same thing happens in romantic relationships. The same thing happens with family. The same thing happens with sexual relationships. And, and the hypersexual agenda says that by choosing whoever you want to have sex with, you are, you are being empowered and liberated. And some might find that true, but you're also giving away a lot of that power because once they have it, or once the perspective of them, somebody sharing your energy, your yoni, whatever is out, they can do with that narrative what they want. It's not just in your power. You give some of your power away. And when we start to recognize that being choosy, being choosy is the least that we can do as goddesses on this earth. <laughs> as goddesses on this earth, then you recognize how much power there is also, also how much power there is in, in discretion, right? How much power there is in selection. And choosing, and cho you get to choose who is worthy of you. So many of us don't recognize that, especially the young girls. Hi, KK. So many of us don't worry, don't recognize that, especially as young girls, because we, because the hypersexualization agenda tells us that it is our duty to give our bodies to men. I talk to so many women and young girls who say that. They, they're having sex they don't enjoy. Or the, their first time was because of pressure. We feel like we have to do it, right? Especially when our, our idols, the hot girl with 100 million followers, it looks like they're being reinforced for that activity. Sure, but this there's also a consequence. There's also a dark side, a B side. And we're seeing that with the way Megan's being treated. Again, she says she would have rather died then deal with a backlash. That is the dark part that nobody's talking about. Find empowerment, yes, and doing whatever you want. <clears throat> but you will also have to take, you also have to recognize that you're giving power away when you do it. You're sharing, at the very least, you're sharing power with, with people. And you can't always trust people with power based on character, which is why it's important to bet. Um, and also that people also have the power to judge. People also have the power to blackball. People also have the power on the back end to do with what they want. So don't lay your body, don't lay your energy, your spirit on the line more than necessary. You are worthy, I guess, in summation, y'all. You are worthy. You are, you are worth the weight. You're worth choosing who is worthy of you. You are worth denying somebody a right of access to you. You're worth your boundaries. You're worth your standards and expectations. And it may feel lonely. It may feel lonely at times while you're sitting there because nobody worthy has come along. That's where it's, it's helpful to recognize again that that's power. But at the end of the day, if you choose to give yourself to somebody who isn't worthy or somebody you haven't vetted, take, just be prepared for consequences. Also, 
be prepared. Like there's plenty of spiritual practices you can do um, to clear the energy yourself. Yeah, to clear that energy yourself. There's all types of spiritual baths, yoni steams, but you you have to you have to have a sacred grounding practice. You have to have a rebalancing practice of some sort to protect you energetically from others from the court of public opinion. If y'all ha if y'all have heard nothing else from this live. I, I want you to remember that it's easier to flow with the current, right? So when I was talking about the divine feminine and the flow, like water, it is so much easier to go with the flow, read between the lines instead of trying to ram your head against ideals, trying to ram your head against values, many of them uh, redundant and hypocritical, sure. But the more you sit and ram your head against it, the more you hurt yourself. Yeah. So it's easier to work with it and recognize that there are systems in place that are bigger than you. You sleep, you sleeping with whoever you want to sleep with is not going to change general values with probably within your lifetime. <laughs> systems, ideals, values, those move slowly. So move smarter, just move smarter with doing with doing what you want. Find liberation in playing chess, not checkers with the system. Don't show them your moves. Don't show people your hand. Keep it here. Think smart. Work with the system instead of against it. You will save yourself so much energy. That, my friends, is called alignment. Get into alignment. Um, whew. I have been talking for an hour. Do y'all have anything to say? Weigh in on your opinions. Um, I would love to hear them. Otherwise, I will be getting gone pretty soon. Patience. Um, Nicole, yes, I will be saving this and uploading it to my channel. Thank you for joining. Thank all of y'all for being here. Um, I also have launched my website, thehighestpriestess.com, where you can get um, spiritual mentoring from me, one-on-one -on -one spiritual mentoring sessions. I do chakra readings and assessments, um, and I also do tarot readings. So visit thehighestpriestess.com, book your session. Until um, the end of January, I am doing $15 off of all wellness services. So exciting. Um, $15 off your first wellness service. I'm about to get out of here because I have to see some clients later. I really, from the bottom of my heart, I appreciate all y'all who came here today. Gail, I love you so much. Um, Michelle, thank you for coming. KK, thank you for coming. Chris, thank you for coming. Um, I appreciate y'all. It really feeds my soul um, to know that, you know, y'all show up and y'all engage with me like this. So I'll see you again soon since this was so successful. Bye.